Shirts, shirts, and more shirts. So many wrestling shirts, I don't know what to do with them all. I'm John Rethlin with a video that many people have been requesting for quite a while, showing my wrestling t-shirt collection. Now, I'm probably going to have to make this a two-part video, so forgive me if I, you know, don't show every single one here, because I'm not going to make a 35-minute video and bore you guys. But I'm also going to include some stories about how I got some of these shirts because some of them are from indie shows and came from meeting some wrestlers and seeing the money go right into their hands. It was really, really cool to see. Support your local independent wrestling in this time of need and in the future. It's really, really great to, you know, have been able to go to indie shows for the last, like, you know, couple years. Had it not been for going to indie shows, had I not started going to indie shows here around uh, Washington State, I don't think I'd have the love of wrestling that I still do right now because... This is before AEW started. AEW and New Japan especially had helped reignite my love of professional wrestling, but unfortunately, WWE has been very down for a while, despite the talents they have. But enough of that. Let's start by showing the wrestling shirts. The Eddie Guerrero Tribute. Eddie Guerrero is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. The He died at age 38. It's really, really sad that he did. And it just, you know, one of my, one of my absolute favorite ever. One of my top five favorite ever. One of my top three, in fact. Bret Hart's number one. Eddie Guerrero and Randy Savage are like two and two A. I mean, really, it's just it, it's just really, really sad. But I like that shirt. It's great to be able to honor Eddie Guerrero. Um, I wish I hadn't turned his storyline into something ridiculous or his death into a ridiculous storyline, but it was what it was. Now, many people have seen this shirt. And um, my sister actually saw that logo on the internet. I mean, she bought the shirt, and then she painted the logo herself because she wanted to do something. It was really, really nice. And that shirt holds a special place in my heart. It really does mean a lot. It's really, really cool. And also, it's classic WWF. How could I not fucking love it? Now we move on to the Kevin Owens show, which you can sort of see. Yes, that one's a bit old, but you know what? It was cool to get. And I like Kevin Owens. I think Kevin Owens has been a tremendous asset to WWE, NXT, and WWE. It's been fucking great to see. And it's a really, really cool shirt. Now, Cody, the American Nightmare. Yeah, I have the shirt of a current AEW talent. I know that was before he, you know, before AEW was considered, a, you know, even a gleam in his eye or anybody's eyes. But you know what? I like Cody. I don't think Cody's the best goddamn wrestler out there, but I think Cody has definitely made the most of his time in AEW and has certainly done a great, you know, great thing trying to help as many talents as he can. I liked a lot of his open challenge matches that he had for the TNT Championship. And, you know, it just, it's a, it's a cool shirt. I'm not a cigar smoker, but you know what? It's a cool shirt. Now we go to an Impact Wrestling shirt. Hey, remember Sam Shaw? Remember Sam Shaw, the current, um, the current Dexter Loomis? Yeah, that's back when he was Sam Shaw and he was a stalker, Christy Hemi. Uh, you know, I actually kind of like that. It actually is a pretty cool shirt. You can wear it and you can get a lot of weird looks. Speaking of Impact Wrestling. Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Yes, pro wrestling is real. People are fake. I like this shirt. I think it, I I really like this one. You get a lot you get a lot of interesting looks with that one too. And then another Impact Wrestling shirt. Uh Bobby Roode, Robert Roode, whatever you want to call him, whatever name you want to call him by. Um that's a really comfy shirt by the way. They use a lot of good material with that, but those Impact Wrestling shirts and a few others I'll be showing you, I actually got in the Impact Warehouse clearance special thing they did with a whole bunch of shirts, DVDs, and all that stuff. I did unboxing videos like three years ago before I got the fucking super flu and lost 30 pounds. That was a great time. Thanks to long-time viewers, by the way, for checking in on me like that. That's why sometimes you might notice that, yeah, let's just say this, that super flu wasn't all that good. It really kind of damaged me. Anyway, so let's get to some more shirts. And I've got a huge pile right here next to me, so let's just get this going. Many of you have seen this one. Randy Savage, the Macho Man. And, yeah, I love Randy Savage. Again, like I said about Eddie Guerrero, one of my top three favorite wrestlers of all time. Fucking love Randy Savage. He's so goddamn incredible. I miss him. I miss him to this day. Uh, I never met the guy, but it's just I miss him to this day. I wish he had been inducted into the Hall of Fame before his death, but no, unfortunately... Fucking unfortunately, Vince McMahon had to be a petty son of a bitch. <clears throat> now we move on to the NWO. Because I can hold up a shirt properly. You know, it's hard to do stuff on a phone like that. NWO, come on, what do you want me to say about one of the greatest wrestling stable factions of all time? Now, Roddy Piper. 
I got this shirt from WWE.com as well. I believe right after his death, um, I was like, shit, I don't have a Roddy Piper shirt. I'm going to buy that. I wish I had bought it before he had passed away, but you know what? It's a great shirt, and Roddy Piper, one of the greatest talkers, and a pretty goddamn good worker. That Bret Hart, Shawn Michael, or Bret Hart, Shawn Michael, Bret Hart, Roddy Piper match at WrestleMania 8 still sticks out in my mind to this day. And now we go to another Impact Wrestling shirt. TNA since 2002. I want to make this clear that Impact Wrestling for a period of years was better than WWE. There are many that would argue that, or there are at least some that would argue that Impact Wrestling is better than WWE right now. I enjoyed Slammiversary 2020 when I watched it, but I'm happy to get that shirt because I remember watching Impact Wrestling from near the beginning. I mean, I had to go back and watch a lot of other stuff before because I started watching it more in 2003, at least more regularly, instead of get, just getting tapes, you know, recordings of it <clears throat> because I couldn't do the pay-per-views live. But it was just really, really cool to see it. And having that brings back some memories of when I really, really enjoyed Impact Wrestling. And I will have more retro reviews in the future. Now, hey, we want some Bailey. I can put that goddamn thing on camera. Bailey is back when she had the wacky, waving, inflatable arm, flailing tube man, and was the baby face, smiling baby face, and the hugger and everything. And now she's a heel doing some. Pretty good work, even if I think it's kind of repetitive, but she really has embraced her role as a heel, and good for her. So, now we move on to Bret Hart, my favorite wrestler of all time, bar none. There, there is no wrestler that will eclipse that. Current favorite is Okada, uh, which I will show that shirt here in a little bit, but Bret Hart is absolutely one of my favorite, you know, one of my favorite wrestlers ever. Like, as far as, like, anybody I even got to see live. He is my favorite wrestler ever, but just as far as anybody I could watch, I cannot watch, I cannot, you know, watch a Bret Hart match, at least, you know, pr uh, before 2000, you know, because it, any of his matches in 2000, like, right after Starcade 99, when he was horribly injured, I, I can't watch any of his matches and, you know, get bored by them. Even the TV matches in Nitro, he had some really, 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 you know, rock and creative behind him, or rather hampering him, but he made the most of it. Bret Hart's matches, fucking great. I love Bret Hart. I will, I will love Bret Hart until the day I pass away, until the day he may unfortunately pass away. Who knows when that day will come? We don't know how much time we got left on this earth. That turned really dark. Let's talk about the revival. I don't have an FTR shirt yet. I'm sorry. I haven't had a chance. I've been having... I've been trying to make sure to save my money to buy some stuff from AEWshop.com because they have some pretty cool shirt designs. I <clears throat> fucking love the Revival. Wish I would have been able to meet them at the uh, NXT show I went to, but, you know, I respect the hell out of them. They're a great goddamn tag team. Fucking incredible to watch in the ring. And really have no complaints about them at all. Now, Bad Influence. There we go. It's too, it's, hip. Yeah, let's see. It's good to be bad. Um, I actually got to meet Scorpio Sky, uh, Frankie Kazarian, and Christopher Daniels, the latter two of which were bad influence, at an indie show uh, last year, last January. And that was great, because I respected Daniels for a number of years. Him and Kazarian were two of the brightest stars in Impact Wrestling that never really got their just due. And Scorpio Sky is a fucking incredible worker as well. It was great to see them. It was great to see them. And, you know, again, you never know who you're going to get to meet at some indie shows. But I also got that from the Impact Wrestling you know, clearance sale. So now we move on to more, more shirts, more shirts, hooray, I'm going to keep showing these, you know what, I probably could do this all in one video, Naito, the Tetsuya Naito shirt, I know it's not the most recent one, but you know what, it's pretty cool, I love Naito, L.I.J., Los Ingonables de Japón, hmm. you know, it probably would help if I actually straightened these on the goddamn hanger, but they're in a freaking pile, so I mean, what the hell do you want me to do, what do you want from me, I'm just a fan with a little channel, no production values at all, as you know. Now, one of my favorite current tag teams in AEW, that is, one of my favorite current tag teams, the Lucha Bros. Got to get this from Pentagon Jr., got a picture from him. Pentag Pentagon's really, really nice. I know he's not called Pentagon Jr., but I'm just saying. Pentagon is really goddamn awesome. Never got to meet Phoenix, unfortunately, <laughs> but I like Penta, and that was a, that's a really, really comfy shirt, and very colorful. Very bright. You could easily be seen walking around doing a jog at night if you were wearing that. You don't even need a freaking vest. Okada, my fa my favorite current wrestler. I never get bored watching an Okada match. Well, except the one he had with Jericho. That wasn't very good. And then, L.I.J. Los Ingonables de Japón. Yes, more of L.I.J. Cool. It was great to have another L.I.J. shirt. And then, 
we get Killer Cross Doomsday Party. Yeah, you know, Killer Cross I actually got to meet at an indie show last year, and you know what? Really, really nice guy. Scary, fucking terrifying in person. Really nice. Really, really nice. I, I, I like Killer Cross. Killer Cross is a very, very nice, uh, you know, guy and a very, great, very good professional wrestler. Tall, great style, really cool to see him live. And then we get to the Rock God, Ricky Gibson. Actually got to get this. Uh, he's part of a team called Four Minutes of Heat with Eddie F. and Pearl. Uh, they wrestle locally and, you know, in a few other states. They remind me of a mix, I, I mean, in case they happen to be watching this, they remind me of a mix of the Fantastics and Rock and Roll Express. They're a great tag team. They can work face or heel. Um, really nice guys. Got to meet them uh, the, you know, just before leaving a... Uh, just before leaving one of the indie shows, but got to get that shirt. I'm really, really happy that I, you know, that I got that shirt. And I'm really happy I started going to indie shows. But come, on, come on, I get stuff like that, and you get to meet potential future superstars in wrestling. They are really good. They are dedicated to their craft, and they are a goddamn good tag team. So, Taylor Hendricks. Um, Taylor Hendricks is goddamn awesome. At least I think she is. Um, I love her look. Her, uh, she has some interesting takes on Twitter, does some interesting wrestling pieces. Uh, been through quite a bit. Uh, the whole thing of, you know, with Ring of Honor, eh, you know, not going to discuss that here, but it's been kind of uh, a little dark. But I got that. I actually thought it was pretty cool and everything. And now I'll be called Satanic and everything because I have something with, you know, that kind of art on it, even though it's a shirt. That That's all it is. It's just a shirt. So let's get to the rest of these. Man, I've actually been blitzing through this a whole lot quicker. So let's tell... The story behind... Oh, look! It's the Jim Cornette face. I'm sure I'll get plenty of hate for that one. I don't agree with everything Jim Cornette says about modern wrestling. I understand why he feels that way. He's very much set in his ways, and he can be very stubborn. Can be. Some of the things he says, he maybe should take the old-school mentality out of it. Him and others. Plenty of others. But I think Jim Cornette's goddamn entertaining. I'm happy to have that. And the fact that he hates Vince Russo, and he does have some opinions I agree with, and he has an entertaining podcast. Yeah, I'm happy to get that shirt. I'm happy to have that one. You know, I know I'm probably going to get hate for it and whatever. I'm not going to be one of these people that's going to say Cornette's the greatest thing ever and he's the greatest wrestling manager. He's one of the greatest wrestling managers ever, and I always listen to the podcast. But I also want to clarify one thing. And this may get me some hate from people that are Cornette fans, but some people need to kind of back off and stop treating him like he's some kind of god. He is a man. He is an entertaining man. He is an entertaining person who has been in wrestling for a number of years. And has some great memorable promos and moments. He's done a lot of work in some, you know, territories and Jim Crocker promotions, especially, and even, you know, his time in WWE. Um, he, he was, it was weird to see him in TNA because, you know, he was right up in knee surgery and all that. But the whole point is, people need to stop treating him like he's some kind of god and going after people that disagree with him. If they're vile and they're hateful, sure, okay, defend your favorite. But if they just disagree with him, let's maybe not do that. Let's maybe not. If we disagree with somebody, we don't have to necessarily say that we that, that person is a terrible person. Plenty of people disagree with me. You think I'm going to call them terrible people? Fuck no. You can disagree with me all you damn well want. I'm a wrestling fan. You're wrestling fans. That's why you're watching this. Or because you're insane. Or because you hate me. Don't know why you'd hate me. I don't know you. And definitely don't want to know you. Moving on. Jim Cornette. Like that. Oh! One of my favorite sayings. Yeah. That's probably going to get me in trouble. Um, I love I love that. Thank you, fuck you, bye. It's just great. It's just a great saying. It really is. Told the story about Jim Cornette. Not going to say any more, but I, I, I find Jim entertaining. Danica Della Rouge. Um, great uh, wrestler from the local area that has wrestled all over as well. She's very talented. You can tell that she's been at this for a few years and will get even better. Um... I got to get that shirt from her at a Defy Northwest wrestling show, and that was really, really nice. I wish, I think I was only, I wish I was able to give her a little bit of extra money. I think I only had enough money for the shirt, because um, I always try to do that. I always, One thing I always try to do whenever I'm at an indie show is give a little extra to the talents, because they're the ones taking the bumps. They may be cutting themselves short on these prices, and that's just what I try to do. But no, that's a cool shirt. And she's got a very flashy entrance and everything, and is a really good wrestler. Her and Rebel Kell, uh, haven't gotten one of her shirts yet. They're, they had a really good uh, series of matches that I've been able to see some clips of. I wish I'd have been able to see the whole thing. So, now we get to 
the weirdo hero, uh, Randy Myers, Ravenous Randy Myers. Finally got to get a selfie with him and get a shirt from him because he didn't have a merch table set up. Love the guy from the first moment I saw him. He reminds me of a, of, you know, a, a modern version of exotic Adrian Street, and I mean that with the utmost of compliments because Adrian Street, uh, really, really good with his gimmick and everything, living his gimmick, and, well... Being able to make people think he lives his gimmick because he was just so good. And Randy Myers, very talented, trained with Natalia Neidhart. He's really, really good. I mean, he is really good. If you get a chance, check out Ravenous Randy Myers. And now we get to Chef. Um, I love Chef. He's one of the first wrestlers I gravitated towards when I started going to the fine Northwest wrestling shows. Talented, former Navy vet, I believe. Um, really, really good. He's only been at wrestling for a few years. And my God, if he's this good after just a couple of years, how in the world is he, how much better is he going to be by the end of the, by, you know, the time he hits the prime of his career, that is, he's really fucking good, <clears throat> really fucking nice, um, you know, and scary. He's fucking scared. When that red light goes on, when he goes out to that ring, he is literally the baddest motherfucker in professional wrestling. He is scary, but he's cool. Now, Chase James, support. Local independent wrestling. Chase James, um, great, great guy, great talent, solid human being, good, solid human being. Um, he is very, uh, he lives in Washington. Very, very good talent in the ring. Very good to the kids. Very good inspiration showing that you don't need to, you, you can achieve your dreams. Don't let somebody tell you that you can't. He is really, really good. And <clears throat> I like Chase and I met him a couple times. And just super nice guy. Really, really, one of the first wrestlers I met at Without a Cause, actually. One of the lo uh, local promotions in Everett, which is a little bit closer to me. I only have to drive about 20 miles and I can get to it. And that's great. Thanks, Max. If you happen to be watching this, I really do appreciate it. So let's get to the rest of these wrestling shirts. I'm just going to make this one video and it'll be a little bit extra long. <laughs> Phrasing. So we get to SCU. This is a shirt I got from them when I went to that... Uh, Define Northwest Wrestling Show and Northwest Wrestling Show. Easy for me to say. Got to meet them. Great fucking shit. Really good stuff. I fucking love meeting them. It was goddamn awesome. The Bucks showed up also, shockingly, at that show and got a huge pop. 500 people made the noise of 3,000. I didn't meet the Bucks. I wouldn't have been able to tell them to, you know, uh, to, you know, plug my picture on Twitter if I got a selfie with them because they blocked me. Because I guess they didn't like the whole, you know, FT, you know, uh, revival Bucks thing when I sided with the, the, when I sided with the revival. But the Bucks have put on some pretty good matches, despite any issues I might have. So, now we move on to Sonico, the Lucha Ghoul. Uh, nice guy. He's, well, I believe he worked in Pro Wrestling Noah recently after working uh, some independent shows. Good talent. Um, has really improved a lot in the ring. I mean, he wasn't bad before. Actually, he was quite good, but he's only gotten better as he's gotten more matches in. And then we get to classic Cody Chung, or Chun. I always forget because announcers say it wrong sometimes. Cody, really nice, really tall, um, you know, just great, you know, I, I would say a standard bearer of professional wrestling because he'll he'll tease doing, you know, like dives and stuff like that, and he can do dives, but he sticks to Matt Wrestling and sticks to being classic Cody Chung. And it's really, really good that he does our tune. <clears throat> Apologies if he happens to be watching this or if any of his fans happen to be watching this if I get that wrong. So, now we get to another Chase James shirt. Snap back, snap backs, and suplexes. Yeah, he's cool. Chase James is really cool. I already told the story about him. Now, Defy. Defy Northwest. Um, first ever independent promotion I went to because without a cause had not been developed yet. But, yep, uh, Defy. I always have a good time there. Even if some of the fans maybe could, you know, learn to draw it back a little bit and not be hateful and not be angry and throw beers at some wrestlers. That does not speak for every single fan. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the defiance, if you will, is really goddamn awesome. Now, let's get to Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa is one of my favorite professional wrestlers, period. I love Thunder Rosa. I think she's great. she was great as Cobra Moon was a little bit held back by that gimmick, though, because she only got to express herself so much. She made the most of it, don't get me wrong. But then when she got to be Thunder Rosa, I was excited to see her. She was at the first ever Without a Cause show, um, you know, and I was excited to uh, be there. And then I got to be part of her dancing entrance, which I did not fucking expect. 
That was really, really cool, though. Couldn't dance for goddamn bit. Man, I'm fucking goddamn you know, bland as white guy dancing. It was fucking hilarious. So, um, but it was really cool. Really, really nice. Um, got, got an autograph from her, got a selfie with her, got that shirt from her, um, or a tank top. It's really, really cool, though, to have seen Thunder Rosa live, and I, I can't wait to see her, and I know, sorry if you're watching this, after All Out, and I didn't get, you know, my time machine to see how the match was, but her match versus Hikaru Shida at All Out, I'm fucking looking forward to. Give those women 15 minutes, they will steal the fucking show. Now, we get to Priscilla Kelly. Um... I know there are some people that didn't like the tampon spot. I'm not saying I did. That being said, it's her career, not mine. It didn't offend me. Priscilla Kelly also was in that match against Thunder Rosa. I just wanted to put that out there because I'm sure somebody's going to make, make the comment and everything because I don't like comedy and I don't like some stuff in wrestling. But I want to say this much about Priscilla Kelly. Excuse me. One, Dynamite Performer in the Ring. Really goddamn good shit. Really good shit. She, she was in that match against Thunder Rosa. Got to meet Priscilla. She was really, really nice. Um, I didn't want to wait too long talking to her because there were some kids that were there because kids are, go to that show as well, and they saw her as an inspiration, saw Thunder Rosa as an inspiration. That was really, really good stuff. Priscilla, though, um, really nice. I got to meet her at multiple shows, and I got to meet her and Darby when they were still married. They unfortunately did divorce or are divorcing, but however, remain friends. Her and Darby, by the way, Darby, fucking fantastic wrestler as well. Glad I got to see him on the indies before he went to AEW, but Priscilla Kelly is a really, really good performer. I cannot wait to see what she does in the future. I hope AEW signs her at some point. I really, really do. Because I think that would be pretty damn cool to see. Um, they need women, and Priscilla would be a good addition. Now we move on to the last few shirts that I'm going to have. I got one more pile after this. Wrestling is forever. It is Matt Cross. Matt Cross is fucking awesome. Great guy. Great guy. Got to meet him in multiple indie shows as well. Fucking incredible. He's been doing this for 20 goddamn years. I got to see Matt Cross versus Ultimo Dragon in 2019. Ultimo Dragon also got to meet him. My God, I got to see that match live. It was great. They wrestled uh, on multiple continents, multiple countries. They've just wrestled everywhere. It was great to see Ultimo moving just as well as he did back in the 90s. Taking the Asahi Moonsault out of his uh, repertoire for that match, probably smart because it was hardwood floor. But him and Matt Cross cut a great pace there. That was great shit. And then we get to <clears throat> Ravenous Randy Myers. By the way, good message. Your anxiety is lying. Um, it's not that anxiety is a lie. It's that it, your anxiety is telling you that you are bad when you aren't. Uh, but yeah, Randy Myers is awesome. Swerve. Whoever designed this, by the way, if the person happens to be uh, here, or if the person happened to be seeing this, that designed this, you're fucking amazing. Swerve got to meet him before he went to NXT. Great guy. Uh, my co-host, a.k.a. my best friend, the Durbinator, actually handed him some of the shades that he uses, which was a really good story. He's told that story in the past. But yeah, Swerve, really goddamn awesome. And to wrap up here in a little bit, Jeff Cobb. Got to meet him at another indie show. A lot of indie shirts that I got here. It's almost like I like wrestling, despite not liking every single thing. Jeff Cobb, this was shortly after he had that match with Hiroki Goto at the G1 uh, special at the Cow Palace. I got to see how that match was. I thought that match was one of the best matches on, you know, of that weekend. Actually, I thought it was one of the best matches of the month. Him and Goto cutting a really good pace, at least in my opinion. But Jeff Cobb, this was right after he had won the TV championship from now Damian Priest, but at the time Punishment Martinez. And Cobb was really, really nice, really cool. Um, got to see him at a couple shows. <clears throat> he is very, very good. And now, yes, the ACH shirt. I know that he, that controversial and everything, but the whole fuck racism, watch wrestling thing. Yeah, that's what people should do. Fuck racism, watch wrestling, and enjoy it. And fuck the sexism also. And maybe just enjoy the fact that men's and women's wrestling can be seen as equal. But yeah, I like that shirt. It's a great thing to wear. And now, Pitfall Jones. The indie wrestler. Literally dresses up like, you know, Indiana Jones. And he's fucking great. Um, actually, funny story. He had he had shirts, but didn't have a shirt in my size, and then finally did. He was willing to give me a deal, and I said, no, I'm going to give at least what I remember. I remember that he was going to give me some kind of deal. And I go, no, I'm paying, I'm pay giving you a little extra. You were nice enough to bring me a shirt. Again, you got to give back to the wrestlers. They're the ones taking the bumps. But Pitfall's really, really good. Um, just, he has, he has a finish called Fortune and Glory. You know, this belongs in a museum. 
It's, it's just, but he's also a really good worker. You can tell how good of a worker he is. He appreciates what he does, and he just gets better. And now, the last final few shirts. <clears throat> this video went on a bit longer than I thought, but you know what? Fuck it, I'm on a roll. All right. Mint Metal, yes, Christian Andes. Um, and she was funny. Him and Pitfall were talking at one point about teaming up, and I, they were trying to come up with a name. I said, Pitfall in the Andes? And they were like, I like that. I said, Juris, go ahead and use it. I don't know if they ever did, but... Um, yeah, Mint Metal, obviously, a take on the Baby Metal logo, but you know what? He was at the Baby Metal concert in October uh, in Seattle last year. I wish I'd been able to go just to see Baby Metal live, but I was trying to save money, and also, I didn't really... I wasn't feeling well at the time, so it's a good thing I didn't go. I had, wasn't feeling well, but... Uh, yeah, he's really, really awesome. Wish I got to see him on more shows. Hopefully I get to in the future when indie wrestling's able to come back. And Dave Turner. I can get that name on there. The Black Sheep. Uh, really nice guy. Uh, really good wrestler. Dedicated. Uh, has really put in a lot of work to continue to train people and to continue to get better in the ring. Very good powerhouse. Very skilled. Um, lives locally, but he has wrestled in a lot of states. Really, really good guy. Really good, solid human being. And now, British Strong Style. Yes, Trent Seven, Tyler Bate, and Pete Dunn were all in Indie Show. Progress, uh, Defy, uh, co-promotion. Got to meet Bate and Seven. Didn't get to meet Pete Dunn. More than the pity, but there was a long line, and it was late, and I didn't have a chance. Because I wasn't going to wait an hour when we had to drive back from Seattle, which is a long way, especially in that traffic. But Trent and, uh, Trent and Tyler were really, really nice. Really, really nice. Um, of course, Derb having the fancy mustache, they, they appreciated it. Trent actually saw him at one point and went, hmm, and that was really cool. But yeah, I got that shirt. It's really, really nice to see them live. And then, whack, without a cause. <clears throat> um, Max, you have put on a hell of a promotion. You continue to put on a hell of a promotion. I'm going to be there at the first show, unless I have to work. But I really, really enjoy Without a Cause. It's great to have a local independent promotion, see it even grow better. And whether the crowds are small or whether they grow and, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how small the crowd is. Because some people have seen pictures I've taken of those shows and just a little bit of a sidebar here. And I said, well, that crowd's kind of small. I said, well, it's a small venue. But also, that crowd gets really, really loud. And they put on some great goddamn matches. And also, they feature the women properly. They at least feature one women's match per show. And sometimes, I mean, you know, it le and they feature it in a prominent spot. Heather Monroe versus Liza Hall was actually in the uh, main event of the last show they put on before the unfortunate, you know, global bullshit went on. And I say bullshit because it's unfortunate that the world has to come to a stop because of stupidity. <clears throat> but I digress. This is a great, this is a, you know, a shirt that I cherish. I love having it. I'm going to try to actually put it in my background more often because... I'm a huge fan of Without a Cause. Can't wait for it to come back. Then, another Shaft shirt. Which, actually, that one's really cool. When I saw he had that, I had to do that. And then, the final Shaft shirt. Yep. You know what? That's my wrestling uh, shirt collection right there. And then I got a few others. I got, you know, I mean, you know, horror movie stuff, The Shining, a few others like that and everything. But yeah, that's my wrestling shirt collection. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. What are some of your favorite wrestling shirts? Not in my collection, but that you have in your collection. Do you have a video that you've done of your favorite wrestling shirt? You can tag me in them, and I'll try to watch them if I can, or at least give them a plug and everything, share them, and say, hey, check out this wrestling fan shirt collection. So, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.